In this video, we'll be going over the cheapest items you can buy in Dungeons & Dragons. This list is restricted to items that are valued at one silver piece and below, but is not arranged in order of price, but rather in order of utility. So the number two spot on this list is more expensive than the number three spot, but is also more useful. Starting us off at number 10, we have the ink pen. This is basically just a specially card stick and sells for two copper pieces. The issues with this item is that alone, it does nothing special for you. This isn't a modern ballpoint pen, but rather it's more like a fountain pen just made of wood, where you have to dip it into a vial of ink before you can use it to draw or write something down. And one ounce of ink costs 10 gold pieces. So to use this item, it's much more expensive than any other spot on this list. Still, this is an item that can actually see use in a game. Specifically for wizards, as they have the ability to copy down spells into their spell book, and to do that, they need something to actually write with. While typically, as long as the player spends the gold in the required special inks for copying the spells, the DM won't ask if your character actually has something to write with. So even if you do need one of these, your DM may forget to ask if you actually have one. This item is more useful than some of the other items on this list, but because it requires ink to be useful, it only takes the bottom spot as without that, it's useless. And at number nine, we have rigid vessels for containing liquid, specifically the jug, pitcher, tankard, and flask. These were all grouped together because they all serve the same purpose, just at slightly different sizes and they all cost two copper pieces. I doubt I have to explain to you what these do, but as a scriptwriter, I get paid by the word and I will increase the length of this video slightly by drawing this out. Just keep quiet about this so he doesn't realize while he's reading. Hey, wait a minute. We should probably cut that out. Getting back on track, there are ways to use all these items in combat if your DM is willing to work with you a little bit. They can be used to carry liquids during travel, jugs and pitchers hold one gallon while the tankard and the flask hold one pint. Maybe the party needs to collect blood to complete some sort of ritual, you wouldn't want to put that into your water skin. You could use them to create some sort of makeshift trap by putting them above a door to spill on a creature when it walks through. Be that water for a prank or oil, which we'll talk a little bit more later on, so that you can set them on fire with a firebolt spell. You can also keep a vessel full of some sort of powder, be it dirt, flour, or ground up chalk that you could throw into the direction of an invisible creature, allowing the party to potentially see their footprints to sort of know where the invisible creature is. However, despite this, there is no mechanical benefits to doing so, due to the way invisibility works. As while a creature is invisible, it can take the hide action anywhere due to be considered heavily obscured. However, until they do, other creatures can still hit them just with disadvantage. The powder could help you track them if they happen to escape. So maybe you could get some sort of use out of this. All of these things can also be done with a bucket. However, a bucket costs five copper pieces and is much harder to create a lid for a bucket and is way more expensive than the jug, pitcher, tankard, and flask, which took the spot instead. Anyway, the place you will most often find jugs and pitchers is in taverns as they will be used to serve large quantities of alcohol to adventurers after a long day of adventuring, while tankards and flasks are what these same adventurers will drink that alcohol from. These are incredibly integral to the aesthetic of almost any D&D game. And because of that, and their marginal usage, and their low price, they made it onto this list. So the next time you go into a tavern and you want a souvenir, maybe ask the tavern keep if you can buy a tanker to commemorate the night. That is, if you can remember the wild night you had when you wake up the next morning. And number eight, we have the signal whistle. This item cost five copper pieces, and as I'm sure you could have guessed, this is a small whistle used for signaling. Now, you may have never thought to use this, but there are times when you do need to signal things, even in a D&D game, like coordinating an ambush, troop movements on a battlefield, or maybe even waking up your party members when you're ambushed during the night. That said, there are spells that do the same thing, like the third level spell sending or the first level spell alarm, so you don't really ever see this item used. At least I have never seen it used, and that's why it takes a lower spot on this list. It has more potential to be actually useful during adventures than the previous spots on this list, although it is still rarely used. And at number seven, we have a flask of oil. This is the only item on this list that cost one silver piece, and what this item allows you to do is splash it on a creature within five feet of you or make a ranged improvised weapon attack with it at a 20 foot range, shattering on impact. If the attack hits the target, they become covered in oil. The oil will dry after one minute, but if the target is hit by fire damage before then, they take five additional fire damage as the oil burns them. You can also pour the oil on the ground coated in an area of five feet or just one square. When it lits, it burns for two rounds and deals five damage to any creature that enters or ends its turn in the area. However, the creature can only take this damage once per turn. As we talked about in the number nine spot, this is an excellent item to use for a trap, either by dropping it on someone when they come through a door, or by coating the ground in front of the door right before you know an enemy's about to go through. Given how cheap this item is, it's a pretty useful item, especially for tier one levels of play, where five damage is a reasonable amount. 
Still, for a one-use item, this could be a bit expensive. And as it is a flat 5 damage, it really falls off the higher level you, and by extension the monsters you are fighting, get. And for that reason, while it does make this list, it's just at a lower spot. And at number 6, we have a simple sack. This is another item that I really shouldn't need to explain, as it's just a bag that holds stuff. A sack only cost one copper piece, and you might be wondering, why would this be useful to me? Well, backpacks can only hold so much stuff, and most of its space will be taken up by your clothes and other adventuring gear. Even portable holes, bags of holding, and Heward's handy haversacks have limits to their carrying capacity. Even demiplanes have a limit to their space. The point being, a good sack allows you to carry more treasure on your person, for when, say, your players raid Tiamat's lair, which mine did, and despite having four bags of holding, one portable hole, and two demiplanes, they could only retrieve a fraction of her hoard. In a later game I had, some NPCs who were stuck in a time loop were trying to raid one of those demiplanes as an easter egg, but you could probably make that an entire campaign. Getting back on track, a sack is just a useful item for adventurers to have, as even in low or no magic settings, a trusty sack will increase the amount of treasure a party adventures can bring back with them when they leave the dungeon that they were exploring. And at number 5, we have sling bullets. Like with all ranged weapons, the sling requires ammunition, and while arrows and crossbow bolts only cost 1 gold piece for 20, you can get 20 sling bullets for only 4 copper pieces. In the real world, the sling, when used as a weapon of war, was actually pretty deadly. However, in Dungeons and Dragons, it only deals 1d4 bludgeoning damage, so it's not used very often. Still, if you're tight on cash, this could be a great option, as the sling itself only costs 1 silver piece, while 20 bullets cost 4 copper. A dart costs 5 copper pieces, so the price of 3 darts, you can get a sling and 20 shots, which is a lot more useful. Not to mention longer range, as the close range for a sling is 30 feet, with a long range of 120 feet, while the short range of a dart is 30 feet, with only a long range of 60 feet. The same as the hand crossbow, just 75 gold cheaper. Sling bullets aren't the best ammunition, but they certainly are the cheapest, and so it makes this list. And at number 4, we have Piton. A single Piton costs 5 copper pieces, and while you would probably need more than one to effectively scale a wall, the Dungeoneer's Pack, which on many classes you get as a starter equipment, comes with 10 of them. For those of you who don't know, a piton is a steel pike with an eye that you can loop rope through, and can be used to climb up walls that don't have good handholds. Think of it as a giant needle specialized for climbing. You wedge them into cracks and rocks faces so that if you fall, the rope can catch you instead of plummeting when you slip. When it comes to adventuring, you never really know what you might face, so it's always good to be prepared. And a few of these are an excellent thing to keep in the bottom of your pack, just in case you happen upon a section of your adventure where you must climb up a cliff or something, which, depending on your campaign, could be pretty common or never come up once. Still, these are pretty useful, so they take a higher spot on this list. And starting off on our top three, we have one piece of chalk, which costs one copper piece. While you can't use it to write in your spellbook, chalk can be still very helpful to an adventurer, especially when you're going through a maze, or really any dungeon crawl. A single chalk mark on the wall with directional arrows so that you might know where you have already been, and the way out if you end up running into a creature that you can't beat. This is one thing that cannot be replaced by magic. However, this is also something that probably wouldn't actually come up in a game, because usually the players know their way out, and by extension the characters do as well. So this is with so many other items falls into the category of technically useful but practically never used. However, if your DM allows it, you might be able to grind it up into a powder and throw it into the eyes of your opponents, or throw the dust on the ground to see the footprints of invisible creatures. Or you could use a chalk on your hands to improve your grip on something like a rope or for climbing the face of a mountain. Still, it is cheap and it has uses that range from dungeon delving to children's games, so it takes a higher spot on this list. And at number 2, we have the 10 foot pole. This is a classic item after all. Sometimes you do need to touch things, and why touch it with your ungloved bare hand when you could touch it with a 10 foot pole instead? Going through a room or hallway where you expect traps, keep your 10-foot pole in front of you to trigger those traps before they trigger on you. Things like pressure plates can be triggered potentially before you walk into their killing zone, and pit traps can be revealed before you step into them. If you want to learn about some other types of traps, you can check out my video on the top 10 dungeon traps, some of which can be dealt with with a 10-foot pole, others not so much. A 10-foot pole is an excellent item that any adventurer could carry around. If you can figure out how to make a collapsible one, that would be even better. But I highly recommend you keep one of these on hand at all times. And last but not least, at number 1 we have the Torch and Candle. These both cost 1 copper pieces and fulfill the exact same function of providing light. Now, before you all chime down in the comments letting us know that you have dark vision, there are a few things to point out here. Because even in a party where everyone has dark vision, it's a good idea to have a torch lit. 
You see, dark vision lets a creature see in dim light as if it were bright light, and in darkness as if it were dim light. But dim light makes everything lightly obscured, which gives you disadvantage on perception checks that rely on sight. And the last thing you want when checking for traps is disadvantage in the roll, although this is another point in favor of having a 10 foot pole. So with 60 feet of dark vision and no torch lit, you can only see 60 feet and everything is lightly obscured. A torch provides 20 feet of bright light and then 20 feet additional dim light, giving someone with dark vision 40 feet of normal or bright light vision, and then 60 more feet of vision into the darkness as if it was dim light, pushing your vision out to a total of 100 feet, up from just 60. Long story short, even with dark vision, unless you need to remain hidden, just lighting up a torch will make a world of difference. Another thing with dark vision is that with it, you are basically using a sort of night vision where you can't see any color. So your DM could throw in a trap that involves color in some way, where unless you see color, you will end up triggering it like a sign that says, press the green tile to deactivate the dragon's breath. And then there's a bunch of tiles, but unless they have some light, they cannot tell which one is green. If they don't press the right one, then it activates a trap spoon fire into the room. The candle does the same thing as a torch, but on a much smaller scale, as it provides only five feet of bright light, and then five feet of dim light beyond that. But if your characters are worried about getting spotted in the dark, yet still need a source of light, the candle is a great option to get light, but just much less of it, while still being super cheap, again, only at a single copper piece. These are both excellent adventuring items that are simultaneously cheap, useful, and actually see play in games. In fact, unless you are in a game where you never go inside, there is probably a torch used in every D&D game, if not by the players, then at least by the NPCs in their taverns, temples, or secret lairs. All right, and that's the video. What do you think? Should we make another video similar to this, but like top 10 best items under one gold? Let me know what you think about that, as well as any ideas for future videos just like this one down in the comments.